So guys, I've been living in hotels for about two weeks now. Um, the first week I was at another hotel. I didn't really like it very much. It wasn't big. It didn't have like multiple rooms like this one. I'm really happy with this one. And I'm just gonna show you everything, show you my tech, show you the cool things in this hotel as well. Um, not sponsored, I wish it was. And I'm gonna let you know why I'm in this hotel. Like I had to basically leave my city very quickly and abruptly. So I'm gonna talk about that at the end of the video for you guys that actually care about like my personal life. I know some people just don't really care about that stuff. So we're gonna get to the tech and the hotel room tour, like my title suggests. Then we're gonna get to like the personal stuff at the end for those that wanna stick around. So the first thing to note, when you come in the door, this is a Hilton hotel, not sponsored, but if you wanna hit me up, that'd be great. You use their app and that's how you can unlock your door. So if you forget your key card or you wanna give it to someone else that's staying with you, you can use your phone to unlock the door and get in. It's great because you can unlock it before you get to the door. So you don't have to like fumble around with anything. And first thing you see when you walk in is the kitchen. It comes with like a slightly big fridge. It's not like a normal size fridge, but it's not a mini fridge either. Right now, this is what we have in there. Just some water, Mountain Dew, juice. Nothing in the freezer. It was a little bit better stocked earlier. And then the kitchen is, it's, it's like nice to have a full size kitchen in a hotel. It makes you feel more at home. Like you can go grocery shopping and stuff, but you can see like there is a stove missing and there's no cabinets. So it's very weird that everything is just kind of out in the open, but I won't complain. It's nice having a full size sink, dishwasher, microwave, mini coffee pot though. I wish that was bigger. Um, and then here is a little dining room in the kitchen as well. Um, this is a lifesaver because the last hotel I was in was literally just a room, two beds, like you had to basically eat in bed. So it's nice to have a dedicated table. And um, I just wanna point out too, <gasps> I haven't told anybody, but I did get a MacBook Pro because I've been out of town for so long and I probably intend to be out of town for much longer and just away from home a lot due to various personal reasons. I picked up a MacBook Pro. That being said, I still really love my iMac at home, but this has turned into a lifesaver. I've edited like the past four or so videos on my channel with the MacBook Pro. And then also I have my AirPods and my Bose QC35s. I use those to edit my videos to check for the sound. Side note, this video is being filmed with my iPhone 10s max so if the sound is bad that's why i'm sorry but i'm just out of town i'm filming with what i got and as far as in the um, living room there's actually a lot going on so first we have this like makeshift desk right here it actually like there's a surface right here but then also there's another one that pulls out so you can just like work right here you can take it anywhere you want to um and you can also work on this surface as well I appreciate all the plugs. Like there's six plugs right in front of me. And then there is an office chair as well. That's pretty nice. So right here we have the couch. It's honestly kind of nasty looking, but it folds out um, if someone wants to sleep over with me. And then over here for um, the table next to the couch, of course you have a plug. I have my native union braided night cable that gets super long. So you can pretty much take it to the other end of the couch and that works out great. And again, great use of space. There's this like pull out work area so you can eat off of that or have your laptop up there if you're at the couch. Another great use of space. Over here, I have my Switch charging. I haven't really played it much and I downloaded um, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze just because it's a game I've wanted to play. Excited to download it. I started downloading it um, with my phone through AT&T tethered and then I got a message stating that I reached my data limit with AT&T for tethering. And when I try to connect to the hotel Wi-Fi with the switch, it doesn't let me because for whatever reason, the switch doesn't prompt you to log in. Like it doesn't do that pop-up screen. So I have to find some type of Wi-Fi somewhere where I can fin finish downloading the game. And then here, nothing to... Um, Fancy, just the TV with some drawers. This would kind of be like the dresser for if anyone 
was staying over with me. And this is where the um, the sheets and stuff for the pull-out couch would go. But as you can see, they are over there. So now we have the bedroom, which again is great that a hotel has like a separate bedroom and living room because if you have multiple people here, you can separate if you have different um, times you go to bed and stuff like that. So again, it's like literally identical TV setup. And here I have my stuff I'm not using. So the power brick to charge my iPhone really fast. Um, this is the 30 watt charger. I don't really use it much unless I need to get my phone charged super quick. And then I have my um, iPad Pro, which I intended to use to like watch videos, but I use my um, MacBook Pro now to do that more. I made a video where, I'm, where I said I'm gonna sell this and I just haven't gotten around to it, but I really do wanna sell it. Just because after um, I finished with school, I don't really have much use for it because I used it to study and used Apple Pencil, stuff like that. And then over here, I'm trying to live a somewhat organized life. I have a hoodie hung up there, I'm being lazy. Um, and then here is my suitcase, not much. Oop, charger fell out, micro USB. I only need that for my Bose headphones. And then here in my drawers, got random socks, underwear, shirts, some more shirts. And then my shorts are down here. Again, I'm like trying to be somewhat organized in this hotel. If you just live out of your suitcase, like you just get, I feel like in this weird funk where you feel like you're away from home. The key is like to make your hotel room feel like home, you know? And like I said, I don't know when I'm going home, so I'm trying to be positive. Oh, and here is a quarter, four quarters. I use it to do laundry because if we go back into the kitchen, you can see I actually bought some Tide Pods to do laundry. This hotel, thank God, has a laundry room. It's like a laundry room slash workout area. Um, so when I first figured out that I was supposed to leave town really quickly, I just threw as many clothes as I could into a suitcase, not knowing how long I'd be gone. Some of those clothes were dirty, so I was so thankful to actually um, wear clean clothes after I was here for a while. And then here is my bed area. It's great because they on this side, there is two chargers down here, a um, USB charger, two chargers here, and two USB chargers. So that's a ton of chargers. And then on this side, I thought I was being kind of neglected because there is one charger hooked up to the light which I use for my Nomad um, wireless charging stand right here. But then I noticed there's more chargers right here. There's two hooked up to the nightstand or the headboard and a USB. So there's a ton. Like this is definitely the hotel for millennials because there's chargers everywhere. And then shame on me, I have towels on this chair drying. Very sloppy, but whatever. And then the bathroom, I mean, it's probably the least interesting room out of everything. There's not really much tech in here. Oh, I guess except my toothbrush. I have my um, Philips Sonicare toothbrush. And a lot of people don't know that it actually charges wirelessly on this little base, the cup you can rinse your mouth out and also charge it, which is pretty cool. And then I have my Braun. I've had this charger forever. It's a Series 7 charger. I used to use it to, did I say charger? shaver i um used to shave this to um like shave my beard but i've had a beard for almost a year now so i'll use it just to shave my neck and as you can see it's needing some of that and then i have a brawn um series seven trimmer i set that on seven and that's how i'll shave my beard and keep that trimmed up and very important when you stay in hotels i always buy like a cheap dollar hand soap like this I hate, I don't know why, but I hate using bar soap like this to wash my hands. It's just super annoying. I like this. It feels like I'm at home when I buy something like this for a hotel. And then we have the shower. Again, not nothing nothing really too fancy. It is, is a handicap accessible. I don't know why we were given that room, but whatever. And I bought some bougie um, shampoo and conditioner. I just don't wanna use hotel conditioner for like two weeks or more. So I spent some money on that. And then I have a um, bar of soap. 
Smells pretty good. I bought this at Target. And body wash by Harry's, not sponsored again. And we're not done. I wanted to show you something pretty cool. So I was pretty impressed by this. We have shades that are motorized. So one just covers the like single curtain. So it lets light in, but that way people can't see in. And then we have the next one, which is like the blackout curtain, which makes it super dark. It's dangerous though, because I will sleep in every day to like 10 o'clock when that thing's down. But as you can see, like it's still pretty bright in here. Like that's another thing I appreciate about this hotel. Like it's pretty lit as you kids would say. Um, there's a light right there. There's a light there. There's a light there, of course. Um, in the bathroom, there's lights, obviously. And then in the kitchen, it's overhead lit. And then we have one, two, three, four lights in the living room. And the living room also has the same motorized feature. For whatever reason though, um, they installed it backwards because down does not make them go down. You have to press up. But you get how that works. Oh my God, stop. Oh, also shout out to my sister from like, gosh, like 12 years ago, she bought me this um, laundry hamper that basically collapses. So it just fits right in my suitcase. It's super amazing for when I go to hotels because I can try to keep my crap organized and just put all my dirty clothes in there. I have an idea of what's dirty, what's clean versus sometimes I'll just mix my dirty clothes and clean clothes together and it gets to be annoying. Um, so I'll basically just take that hamper empty it into my suitcase, and then I'll go down to wash my clothes. Okay guys, that was my whole hotel room tour. Keep in mind, I'm filming it with the iPhone XS Max with the built-in microphone. So I'm sorry, like my last previous videos, I'm sorry that audio is really bad. But anyway, um, just I wanna give a quick update about what's going on with my husband. So if you've watched my previous videos, you know he's been in the hospital for like, gosh, at this point it's like six weeks. He was um, basically just acting really strange. We took him to the hospital near us. They had no idea what was going on after doing every test you can imagine. They sent him to Shan's Hospital, which is in Gainesville, like the UF campus. It's been amazing. We've been here for um, over a week now, and I've kind of ba been bouncing to different hotels because I don't know when I'm leaving. So I just do a stay date of a week um, so this hotel is the second hotel I've been in and this Thursday will be two weeks So I need to figure out if I'm going to go to a third hotel or just stay here if they have availability at this hotel I'm just gonna stay So anyway about my husband um, He Finally got diagnosed with something so originally he came to this hospital this better hospital in Gainesville to get a brain biopsy done because the previous hospital suggested that was the next step to take but they were too afraid to do it they kept saying words like catastrophic um bleeding could occur if they nicked a vein whereas this hospital did it literally no problem um obviously there's always risk to surgery but they seem super confident so after the brain biopsy was done my husband went to icu and he was there for about a week which that's kind of crazy um but during his stay at the ICU, they said we might have an idea, like the neurological board was having a discussion about him and they thought he might have, have had a venous stroke, which I had no idea what that was. Um, so I Googled it and a venous stroke is basically your brain is getting blood through its, the arteries okay but your veins are not profusing the blood out correctly. So basically, basically your brain is collecting blood, but not draining it. So that led to my husband talking very strange. Like he would just say words not making sense. He would be angry, aggressive, restless. I mean, if you've seen my previous videos, you, you know what happened. Um, so basically they said it's, they can treat it, um, so they said we can, well, they didn't say they could treat it. They said, we want to look to verify that this is the problem. 
So I literally, I got this call as I'm taking a shower. They said they need to do an angiogram, which is where they go in like through your arm and basically like put a catheter, go up through your arm, like up into your brain um, and take a look at stuff. So they do the angiogram. Like as he's in this procedure, they call me and say, we did verify that his deep venous system is not draining correctly and that they can heal it or try to fix it with basically, they, they, the term they used was embolizing the fistula. <laughs> if you're medical, you maybe know what that means. Uh, so basically what they do, they take a glue, um, it's a glue called onyx. And from what I understand, they, you know, they put a catheter up in your arm, it goes up into your brain, they glue off that vein so basically that vein that isn't draining correctly just kind of gets killed if, if I'm understanding that correctly. Um, so that was done. And then once my husband came out of that procedure, they put him on anticoagulants. So he was given a, like a constant drip for a few days. And then after that, he's been given like an injection twice a day. So they're like slowly weaning him off the anticoagulants coagulants and I have noticed like he's he seems to be bruising very easily like every spot that he's gotten a shot like in his stomach and his arm where I believe the catheter like went up into is very bru bruised um that's just gonna have to heal over time but he's actually doing really good now um I see really good in a comparative sense like he still at times doesn't make sense but he can kind of carry a little bit of a conversation better. He can like remember things better. He finally knew like that we weren't in our hometown anymore. He understood like we were at another hospital. He's understanding like what the year is. He's like learning when you talk to him. Um, he called a hippopotamus a horse, but I corrected him. And then minutes later I asked him and he was able to remember it was a hippo. So we're making very small strides. And I think very soon they're going to discharge him from the hospital and admit him into like a rehab hospital. So there, basically he has to do rehab for three hours a day. If he's not capable of doing that, he wouldn't get accepted into that program. So I'm very happy that he keeps doing well. Like he's, he's not aggressive anymore. He's not wandering. He listens pretty good. Um, sometimes he'll get upset because he'll try to talk to you and tell you to do something for him but then the words he's saying still don't make sense. So then he gets kind of angry at you. So I try to just diffuse that whenever I can. So yeah, like right now we're just waiting, but I'm, I'm, I'm positive, you know? So he had a, he basically had a type of stroke and if you're familiar with strokes, they can take a while. So I very well expect the rest of 2019 to be, you know, dedicated towards his recovery. And, you know, I'm just kind of excited about that because like, honestly, I thought that he wouldn't get better. Like, there was, a, there was something deep inside me, like, that almost accepted that he would just be kind of like this person that's not him anymore for the rest of his life. Because for over a month, we were not given answers. We were almost told that, oh, well, it happens. But ever since we got into the University of Florida, Shan's Hospital in Gainesville, like I've just felt so much more positivity. They are working so quickly and they came up with solutions very fast. <laughs> like heck, the first thing they came up with after the brain biopsy, their first guess, they were right and they fixed it all in a day, which is very impressive. Going forward, I'm going to try not to do like dedicated updates on my husband because that seems to trigger people. And I do realize like this is a tech channel and a lot of people subscribe because of tech, not because of my personal matters. So if I'm going to do updates about him, I'm gonna to tend to do them to the end of the video after most normal people are done watching. And as much as it sucks, a lot of people get triggered based on my sexual preference. So I'm trying not to mention that. Um, Cause my last video, I said unsubscribe if you don't like gay people and I lost like a hundred subscribers. Um, probably not the best choice of words, but also I'm cleansing my subscriber base of any people that are not accepting.
Okay, that's it guys. I'm having a great day so far. My husband's taking a nap. I'm gonna edit this video on my MacBook Pro. See you later. Bye.